Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Skugog. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, we have many uh, people that have never been here before, so uh, this is uh, a great community and we welcome you here. I'd like to introduce to you the Skugog counselors that are here with us today. Uh, if you please stand, uh, Larry Corgan, Howard Danson, Wilma Watton, John Hancock. Uh, we also, we're a two-tier government. Uh, we're uh, part of the Durham region, and we have uh, some uh, Durham region councillors. So I ask you all to stand uh, to be recognized. Uh, Mayor Henry from Oshawa. Willie Wu, come on, stand up, please. <laughs> Willie Wu, uh, where's Peter? They're the ones I saw this morning. Any other ones uh, that I did not see? Mary, Mary, I did see you, sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Just to give you a profile of Skugog and why this is so important to us, we are a GTA countryside community with a population of 22,500 people. Our main industries in Skugog are agriculture, tourism, and small industry. Over 85% of our land mass is agricultural or environmentally protected lands. These areas include the Oak Ridges Moraine, the Trent Severn National Waterways, and within our township, exists the First Nations community of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island. You'll find in Scugog the second largest population of shorebirds, second to only Pelee Island. We attract 1.5 million visitors every year who enjoy coming to explore our countryside and to witness our natural beauty. So why are we here today? Because the movement of soil from the GTA major cities to the GTA countryside municipalities has become a significant issue to the people and to the governments of rural Ontario. According to the top 10 aggregate producing municipalities, which three exists in this area of the province, 8 million truckloads are consumed every year and this trend will continue for the next 25 years, 400 million truckloads of aggregates. This industry has been operating for decades and is highly regulated and respected by the province. Large fill operations have been moving into the countryside. This industry resembles the aggregate industry in both its operation and quantities of soils being moved but they lack any regulation controls, regulatory controls, nor do they deploy consistent practices. The scope of this industry is unknown due to a blind eye approach that has been handed down to local municipalities and conservation authorities to manage. An assignment where municipalities have not even the knowledge tools, the skill sets, the technical support, or other resources to manage safe, responsible commercial fill deposits. I challenge any of you to follow up to your residential developments, uh, subdivision developments, soil landfill sites, or any other development site, and tell me to any degree of accuracy where that imported soil originated from and to find the soil testing results of those deposits. You will be surprised at the limited information you will find. This results in confusion, public alarm, and fear, inconsistent practices, and possible threat to our environment and drinking water. Those realities now rule the day. Don't get me wrong. Many deposit sites are well managed by responsible people and their problems at times are only a matter of poor record keeping or the inability sometimes to offer proper information to inform government and the public with any degree of certainty, certainty the contents or quality of the soils. Today you will hear two stories, two very different fill operations one who practiced avoidance of municipal oversight, and the other a situation where industry worked hand in hand with local citizens and their municipal government to set self-imposed standards that addressed all known environmental issues, as well, they know all 
uh, all identified qualities of the soils. They understand the quality of life issues and the environmental impacts. The, publics were, the public was engaged in this process. An agreement was established. And today with us, we have a senior legal representation from Durham Region, uh, Jason Hunt. Please stand, Jason. And John uh, Tyndall. John from Miller Thompson. Uh, we didn't have time to host the legal session at this, but uh, John and uh, Jason were crucial in establishing the foundation for this agreement. So if you want to discuss it with them at the break, it's very important. This agreement clearly outlines responsibilities for the two agreeing partners. Although the second site has been successful in its operation, to date I would suggest that without clear and defined regulations, leaving standards to a volunteer process is not a wise or recommended practice. Without regulations, breaches and inconsistencies will exist. Soil conditions will remain unknown and municipalities and conservation authorities will be left without the proper tools, resulting again in citizens living in fear as well as leaving municipalities with sites where soil conditions are unknown. We are here today to seek constructive, sustainable solutions and partnerships with all levels of government, conservation authorities, the industry, local concerned citizens, and environmentalists. The representatives from all of these sectors will speak to you and outline their views and share their knowledge relating to large-scale fill operations. This is a time for open minds. It's a time to work together. It's a time to find solutions. It's a time to show leadership and resolve. As I have publicly stated time and time again, this is not about banning fill, but to set proper standards to allow proper management of the movement of cross-jurisdictional soils. This industry, like aggregate production, is vital to Ontario's economic future, and it should be understood and well-managed. It is not time to polarize ideas and positions, nor to demonize an industry or individuals. It's a time to follow the two activities of leadership, activities of wisdom and inspiration. Wisdom is the activity of getting all facts and all knowledge to make just and right decisions. And inspiration is the action of breathing life into yourself, breathing life into your community, breathing life into our province, and breathing life into our country. Today's five objectives is to examine and discuss the status of large fill issues and implications to your community, to share current perspectives from government agencies government, agencies, community, industry, and science, to highlight best management practices currently being applied through specific case studies of large field operations, and to identify gaps in the oversight of activities, to discuss next steps forward in enhancing management, the management of large-scale fill sites. If we are only here today to have a discussion, we are not taking the leadership role to use wisdom and inspiration to make our communities and our province a better place. I thank you all so very much.